welcome to another video that I'm uh, making just now. This one is going to be different from the previous topic where I was talking about um, battle royales and video games in general. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a city that I love, the city that I was born and raised in, Edinburgh. I think of it as Athens of the North, and that's primarily because we've got this wonderful Parthenon-esque structure sitting on top of Carlton Hill. So. This video is really just going to be a whistle-stop tour of Edinburgh where I can give you a couple of ideas of things to see and do, how to get around and uh, give you a little teaser for other videos that I'm going to be making a little series about as well. Let's start with uh, getting to and getting around Edinburgh. Now, if you're coming to Edinburgh by plane, then you'll be arriving at Edinburgh Airport or in Glasgow. If you're arriving at Edinburgh Airport, then you're going to be getting the uh, either Air Link 100 bus or you're going to be getting the tram system. Uh, that's the most effective way to get into the city centre. Um, if you're coming in by train, then chances are you'll be arriving at Haymarket or Waverley. And if that's the case, then you're already pretty much in the city centre and you've got to rely on either public transport or anything else. Now, one of my favourite things about Edinburgh is actually its transportation links throughout the city. Now, I know that there are other cities in the world like London and New York and uh, even Glasgow's got its own subway, but um, in those you've got people who are very disparaging of their public transport. Maybe it's crowded, it's dirty, it's busy, it just gets a little bit hectic around rush hour. And, Edinburgh's not immune to those issues. We do have uh, rush hours, we do have uh, busy public transport periods, but on the whole, I find it a lot more comfortable uh, to be in rush hour and to be on public transport in Edinburgh compared to other cities. Um, probably because I'm more familiar with it. Now, that's not to say you won't have your issues with it. As I say, we do have our own uh, rush hour, and there is always a chance that you'll get onto a bus which will have some little Ned sitting at the back swinging from his butt fast and playing his music out loud from his phone, or deciding to make a call on loudspeaker because they're lovely and sociable like that so that we can hear all about what's been happening to Chantel. Other than that, you've got uh, how you get around on the buses. Now, uh, the bus provider that I typically use, in fact, I only use this bus provider in Edinburgh, is Lothian Buses. Now this is actually a locally owned company, owned by um, uh, several companies throughout uh, Edinburgh and kind of decentralising transport from first bus. And I find it to be much more cost effective and uh, a higher quality of transport really than anything else. So that's why I would choose them over first bus. But, as well as our bus links that take you throughout the city, you do still have taxis throughout Edinburgh. And um, we've still got them and there are several companies out there and you've still got your transport services like Uber and Get. Now, if you're not familiar with Get, Get is a black cab taxi company that allows you to uh, only get into registered black cabs. Um, it works in very much the same way as Uber. Now, I'm gonna be nice and I'm gonna give you my little code to get involved with them uh, and I'll get a kickback, you'll get a kickback, it's all great. Um, that being said, once you're within Edinburgh and once you're in the city centre, everything's very much walkable. You're not going to be more than about 30 minutes walk from anywhere once you're in the city centre. It's one of the things I particularly love about it. But there are various areas within Edinburgh. Now, I think of Edinburgh as being like several small villages that have amalgamated to become uh, this lovely city that we live in, or well, I live in. Um, and because of that, you do still have to maybe travel by bus to get to one of those little areas, just as if you're in London or New York in the boroughs, etc. Then you've got to uh, fly between those, uh, get transport of some sort between those areas to make it all walkable. That's kind of how to get around Edinburgh. Um, let's see about things to do. Um, let's start with Edinburgh Zoo. You've got that over in Kerstorfen. You've also got the Royal Yacht Britannia down at the bottom of Leith. You've got Edinburgh Castle. Now, what other city has such a beautiful castle in the middle, surrounded by this deep set of fortifications and moat and 
like just slap bang in the middle of the city and not affecting anything else. It's gorgeous. And um, once you get up there, you'll have fantastic views over all the city. And you'll get to see kind of what a beautiful city it is uh, based on all these little hills around. So you do have that uh, to look out on. One word of warning, if you are going up to the castle, uh, about one o'clock, you've got the one o'clock done. And you want to make sure that you're either aware of this and you're there to see it, or you're aware of it and you're moving away from it, because it is quite loud and it could be uh, startling to young children or people who are completely unprepared for it. Now, down from the castle, you have got the Royal Mile. Now, the Royal Mile is so called because you go between Edinburgh Castle at the top and Holyrood House, or Holyrood Palace at the bottom, and the Queen's Residence in Edinburgh. Now, there are loads of attractions on the Royal Mile. There are loads of tourist shops as well. You're going to see a lot of shops that are uh, claiming to pr provide everything Scottish. You're going to have tarts, you're going to have whiskies, you're going to have tablets, you're going to have fudge, you're going to have everything. And you could go down and you could end up at the bottom a giant tartan mess. But there are attractions as well. Just down from the castle, you've got Camera Obscura. And this is one that I've not been to, but it is a, an amazing one to go into, apparently. And right across the road from that, you've got the Whiskey Experience. Now, this is one that I have no idea how I have not been to yet. You go around and you learn about whiskey. Not only that, it's got a little ride in it where you sit in kind of hollowed out barrels and you go through this little journey. It's like whiskey plus theme parks, two of my greatest loves, meshed together. I have no idea why I've not been there yet. Moving further down, you've got a fair few pubs as you get there. You've got the World's End Pub, um, about halfway down the mile. Who knows why it's called World's End? I'll look into that for another later video for you where I'm giving you a bit of history about Edinburgh. And then right down at the bottom, as I mentioned, you've got Holyrood House and you've got the Scottish Parliament. Now, you've got them across the road from each other, which is uh, nice. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the stylings of uh, the uh, palace rather than the parliament, but that's very much a personal taste thing. There's always something going on around there. When I was down there uh, last week, there was a protest by school children about uh, global warming and how they're trying to help and involve in it. So it's quite active down at the bottom there. But uh, where you've got the palace and you've got the parliament, just next to them, you've got Holyrood Park and of course, another huge visitor attraction for the city, you've got Arthur's Seat. Now, Arthur's Seat is a dormant volcano um, and it's absolutely breathtaking to look at but also to get to the top of and look out over Edinburgh. Because it's higher than the castle, you get a view over the castle from there and most of the city as well. Now that's a fantastic thing to do, but bear in mind while all the paths up it are walkable and you can actually scale up the grass on its own without a track, please bring appropriate footwear. If you're taking flip-flops or sandals and trying to climb up this, then you might succeed, they might fall off, you might slide, you might end up hurting yourself or getting filthy. The best thing to do is to think about your footwear when you're going on there, but it is walkable. Now from there you'll probably see that we've got a lot of uh, kind of speckles of green throughout the city as well as larger green areas which would be uh, the number of golf courses that are actually available. Now I don't know the exact number, I'm not a golfer, I know that my brother is and he goes uh, almost every day to a golf course so um, yeah, there's a lot of them around. But from Arthur's Seat as well you'll probably see another one of our fav uh, famous hills which would be Blackford Hill. Um, and you've got the Royal Observatory in Blackford Hill as well. A lovely place to go to. I've not tried to get into there, so I don't know what the experience is like. Now, other things that Edinburgh is famous for, we've got a lot of pubs. We like to drink, we're Scottish. So there are loads of pubs throughout Edinburgh and loads of restaurants. Now, I'm gonna try and break these down for you in later videos because I have no idea how many there are. The latest figure I can find is from 2008, which is over 11 years ago now, so bound to be completely inaccurate. And um, if you are struggling for choice and you're just looking for a pub or somewhere to grab food, there are several weather spoons within the city centre and you can jump to either one of those and you'll get a consistent experience from that. One I would personally recommend to you though is actually the Beer Kitchen on Lothian Road. Now the Beer Kitchen is uh, Innocent Guns restaurant and bar 
within Edinburgh city and it's absolutely fantastic. Whether you're into craft beers or you just like a good lager or what have you, they've got a great selection in there and the food is really tasty. Um, as well as the beer kitchen, my favourite place to get chicken wings is a place called Wings in Edinburgh. Now you'll find that off Old Fish Market close on the Royal Mile. Uh, it's next to some sort of beer and burger place and the uh, Edinburgh Fringe Office. Uh, if you go down from the castle, you're going past St Giles Cathedral. It's in on the right. It's in a little alleyway that looks like it's going to have nothing good down it because it's quite dark and dank. But once you get through that, there's a little Spanish school thing on your left hand side, and then you've got wings. And oh my goodness me, if you're a fan of chicken wings, these guys do it right. There are so many sauces to choose from. You can even try one of their challenges like the suicide challenge. Now, suicide wings are not for the faint of heart. I've only tried a little bit of it, and I had to drink gallons of their milkshakes, which again, are amazing. If, however, you try the suicide challenge and you're thinking, well, I've still got some of my taste buds, I want a harder challenge. They've got an Armageddon challenge, but be warned, this can melt your face off and you may have to sign a waiver to actually do it. So that's, that's a bit of wings. There are a couple of brew dogs as well. There's a uh, Cold Town Brewery and you've got Paolo Tzu Beer um, or Lager kicking around Edinburgh as well. Lots of gin places. It's all fantastic if you're looking to have a little drink, which is probably why we see so many stag and hen dudes kicking around. There's also a lot of little cinemas. You know, you've got your normal views and cine rooms, etc. But you've also got little gems like the film house, the cameo, and my personal favourite, the Dominion. Now, I love the Dominion. It's in Morningside, but a uh, very cheap, easy to get there. And you've got these lovely, gorgeous, plush sofas to sit on and just relax like you're sitting at home if you had a lovely leather sofa to sit in at home. Um, and it's just fantastic. Now, other reasons to come to Edinburgh as well as just sightseeing is maybe for the festival, um, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which happens in August every year, and it's typically known as the Edinburgh uh, International Festival. Um, and you've got the Fringe, which is more kind of common, commonly what people think of when they think about the Edinburgh Festival, because you've got things like your stand-up comedy, your uh, weird independent art stuff as well, and it's great fun. There's a lot of hubs throughout Edinburgh, and I'll give you a bit more information about the Fringe and about the Edinburgh International Festival in a later video, but uh, be warned that if you are coming and planning on coming to Edinburgh during the festival, then it's going to be a lot busier than at other times during the year. Um, as such, just think ahead about booking places to sit in and drink in, etc. Just to make sure that you're somewhere that you like and somewhere that's comfortable. Another time that we get busy during uh, in Edinburgh is actually the Six Nations, which uh, tends to go on throughout February and early March. And uh, that's another great time to be in Edinburgh, particularly at the weekends, because you've got the games going on. And when there's a game happening at Murrayfield, you know the city is going to be run. Uh, it is difficult to find a good pub to sit in and get some space and be comfortable with your friends, but it's worth trying to do. If not, planning ahead, maybe looking at some restaurant or pub that you can get into. Um, a hot spot during both of these periods is the grass market. Now the grass market is just down from the castle so you will get some lovely shots of, of the castle from there but uh, it's a very busy place with a lot of pubs and restaurants as well. Um, personal favourite during particularly the fringe late night stuff is a place called Mama's Pizza. Now their pizzas are great and their wings are good. It's all very enjoyable and really tasty. I'll hopefully be able to go in there and show you a bit around it at some point, but not right now. Another place that gets really, really busy um, during uh, the fringe and particularly during the Six Nations is uh, the Three Sisters, which is in the Cowgate. Now that's just along from the grass market, but the Three Sisters is an unofficial hub for Six Nations activity, but also it's a huge free fringe venue. So there's a lot of free activities happening there, whether it's stand up and um, what have you. They've got lots of little rooms that you can go into and watch shows all day. It's great fun. Now, just up from the Three Sisters, you've got Candlemaker Row and then you've got Greyfriars Bobby. Now, you'll see a, a famous little statue of a dog up at the top there called Greyfriars Bobby, and that's a story for another time. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous, this little dog story. Um, just next to that, you've got the National Museum. Uh, not to be confused with the Edinburgh Museum, 
which, or the Museum of Edinburgh, which you'll find upon the Royal Mile, which I only just found the other day and looks like a horrible little shack, but just go to the right one. I'll have a video here to show you. Uh, there's loads of exhibits throughout uh, the museum and it's great to go into and just have a wander around. You've also got your paid exhibits as well, but even if you're just going to have a look around and see what's there, it's a lovely place to go. There's a lot of interactive exhibits for uh, the younger children, but also very interesting for the adults as well. And uh, there's a lovely little coffee place as well. Close to the museum, you've got the Elephant Cafe. Now that's uh, just heading back towards the Royal Mile from the museum and that is famously where uh, people think of for Harry Potter uh, with JK Rowling having written some of her books there. Now she may have written some of it but I know for a fact she did not write all of them. Still a nice little place to go in and you'll see tourists swarming it uh, whenever they're in town. Uh, there is however a lot more than what I've just talked about to do in Edinburgh. Edinburgh is an amazing city with a lot to do and I'm going to break that down as best I can into several videos and you can choose which ones to watch if you're staying in specific areas, if you're looking for specific things then hopefully uh, I'll have a video to address that. If not, please just fire me an email and give me a suggestion and I'll see if I can cover that in a video for you. Uh, maybe you're a celiac and gluten-free and you're looking for where's the best place to eat. Well, I uh, should be able to find that out for you with my wife and sister-in-law both being that way. Um, maybe you're just looking for the best place to drink during the Six Nations or during the Fringe. Maybe you're just looking for a nice quiet spot to relax in. I'll be able to show you a few of those. But again, drop me an email if you have a suggestion. You can get a hold of me on Twitter at Ruar88. You can get a hold of me on, by email, ruri at unhipsterpod.co.uk. And uh, yeah, there's other ways that you can get a hold of me. If you're watching gaming videos, etc., or on Xbox, then you'll find me at unhipsterpod. That's about it from me for uh, this video. Hopefully this has been enough information to just give you a little whistle stop tour of Edinburgh and get you interested for future videos that I'm gonna be doing. Um, please do feel free to give me some suggestions on what you'd like to see, what you'd like to hear about. Maybe it's just opinions uh, on the city and developments within the city, like uh, the St. James Centre revival, and um, things like that. I'd be more than happy to talk about with you. But for now, that's it from me. Bye. So that felt a lot better than last time. Yay! Yeah. And this but I'm still recording because I like to record a little bit where I'm talking to you. So your voice is now going to be in this. Oh, yeah, my voice is horrible and whiny. It's now in there. Hi, <laughs> hey world. Or the two people that watch this. Ah, give me some credit. There's going to be at least one. Please watch my videos.